So yeah. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt or take the spotlight. No, no. <laughs> I mean, like it, like I said, I would, as far as especially real estate goes, yeah. like I was at square one. <laughs> yeah. Like if you just consider like anyone here that's even heard of wholesaling before, you're like yeah. three steps ahead of where I was. <laughs> so okay. yeah, it, the idea of wholesaling was a very novel concept and I was like, that sounds awesome. So that was actually what, where I started. What year um, was this? Um, let's see. I've been uh, I've been in real estate a little over three years. So it was okay. like when it, it was 2019. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So just before COVID started. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it was yeah not long before COVID. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, All right. and, and so, um, anyway, like where I started was wholesaling. Okay. So I, I heard this, you know, this whole concept laid out and I was like, this sounds awesome. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I, I promptly start marketing. Yep. Um, you know, I, I think, um, the first one that we got a hit on was a Craigslist ad that we did. Okay. Um, Craigslist really does work. This deal, by the way, did not work out for us, but, <laughs> but it, it was our first one like under contract. And I honestly, the big, the big thing was we took action like right away. You know, we, mm -hmm. we, we went out and we started marketing. Um, so, so wait a minute, you did not spend a year just watching YouTube and watching people do their stuff and no. just like, okay, how do you do that? And, and wait until you get everything perfect before you actually yeah. took action. No, see, no, we got anybody out, anybody out there watching, take action. That's how you're going to learn. You can learn a little bit here and take action, learn a little bit, yeah. take action. If you just yeah. try to know every, try to get everything and try to get everything perfect, it's not going to happen. Okay. Yeah. You're going to make a mistake. Sorry to interrupt, Absolutely. but it was just, no, yeah. that's, you know, I, I talk to new investors all the time, like, um, at meetups and stuff like that. Yep. And I hear people saying stuff like, oh, well, I got to get my entity set up first and stuff like that. And I'm not here to give legal advice. But I will say that you don't need an entity or a bank account for that entity until you have a deal, like until you're bringing in money, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, so, and not to say it's not important and I'm not saying to like put it off by any means. Um, but I am saying that like your first priority is really marketing and how do I get, how do I get a deal? And yes. you know you can you can be setting up that other stuff while you're doing that, but priority yeah. number one is marketing. And so so yeah, we we took action pretty quickly. Um, I mean, I would say from the time where we like made the decision of like okay, yeah. we're doing this, uh, it was we were probably marketing within like a month, maybe. Okay. And mind you, like. 30 days prior to that, prior yeah. to when we made the decision, I was still at the point that I had never heard of wholesaling. Okay. So that so, wasn't so, what. <laughs> that okay, wasn't, hold on, hold on, hold on. You, oh, I'm talking like 30 years ago. <laughs> okay. So you were trying to get a deal, but you didn't know what wholesaling was. No. So one, when we first started like actively pursuing deals, I knew what wholesaling was. Okay. But right. I had just learned about it like seven days ago. <laughs> <laughs> so try by fire. That, yep. That's it, you know? And just just like the, uh, Julie here says, just get the deal. Just get that yep. deal. So Absolutely. 100%. Yeah, so, so, so we started we started marketing we got our hit off of a off of a craigslist ad um and it was it was a 
pretty good one in in some ways. So it was um, the motivation for the seller was uh, it was like probate. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to there was there was like some financial issues. I want to say there it was um, maybe pot. I think they were approaching foreclosure as well. Um, okay. They they had multiple things going on that would make them motivated to sell. Yep. Now, one thing that didn't work out so well for us was it wasn't a great area. Um, you know, it, it wasn't a terrible area, but the property values weren't very high. Um, like to the point where I think ARV was probably best case scenario, like 20,000 or something. Okay. <laughs> so um, was, there, that was, was this, was this what? in the area where you grew up or was this? Uh, no, this, this, this was in Flint. Um, in Flint, okay. Yeah, so, um, so anyway, we, we drove there, got the contract, got things going, like learned all of this. This was all like great training um, mm -hmm. for future deals because we got our contract in place. We got figured out how to fill them out, fill it out, lead them through that process. You know, build trust and rapport yep. with the seller. You know, all of that stuff. So we get it under contract. Super excited. We don't have any buyers, by the way. <laughs> that and of course, if you're I, seven days in. Yeah, no, I know. But if I was to get, if I was to like start over again, start with the buyers. Yeah. Start with the buyers, find out where they're buying, reverse engineer. Um, but that's not what we did. So we got we got this deal from a Facebook ad or from a Craigslist ad, and we start marketing to try and get this sold. We get title work going and stuff like that, and that was. That was a real learning process. So this whole this whole deal, we had it under contract for like six months. Wow. That is not normal, not advised. No. And I know that you, Randy, as a wholesaler, know yeah. how much <laughs> must have been going wrong <laughs> for yeah. us to have that in six months. Now I've so, had that happen to me before. I yeah. Had it under contract. So it it happens, time. but yeah. But it it was also our first deal. But it, it yeah. let's just or our first our first contract. I'll say that. Yeah. And so we well, didn't. See, we most of the time, it. if you have it for six months, you usually don't close on the deal. The one I know. that I yeah. the one that I had for six months, I ended up closing on the deal. So yeah. it was uh, fact, it was a probate issue. This was this was a probate issue as well. Yeah. <laughs> it, so I I brought it to. Um, our title company that they work with a lot of investors. They've kind of seen everything. They do all the creative stuff that we're looking for Yep. as investors. And I brought it to the title agent and he was like, this is the most complicated title work I've seen in 15 years. <laughs> and I was like, well, lucky me. So you never want to hear that. <laughs> Basically, what happened was there was a dead guy on title, which is never fun. Yeah. Um, it needed to go through probate, but it hadn't yet. Don't know how it. it I don't know. It was like the probate court missed it or something. But like okay. nobody was aware that it needed to go through probate because there was still a living owner, you know, on gotcha. title. Yep. Stuff. So we were going through all of this stuff. There was, by the way, another guy on title who was in prison. Um, you know, <laughs> it was just like, it was one mess after another. But like I said, wow. learned a lot. Probably my biggest mistake in that deal in particular was letting it go on so long. Yeah. I probably, which it's hard because it's like, when you have like even three months invested into, you know, yeah. a property under contract and stuff like that, it's like, man, you don't want to let that go. But then no, I was no. like, <laughs> then I was like, I wasted like another three months consumed by this and didn't get the, <laughs> get the deal done. 
Yeah. So that was a learning lesson. One other lesson for, for that, for, for viewers as well. What I learned from that experience was when I, I, in that case, at least yours worked out obviously, but yeah. in this case, I wish I had let it go sooner. Yep. And then the other thing was I shouldn't have been so focused on one deal. Mm -hmm. If you, if you want to make, certainly if you want to make a living in this business, um, but especially if you're, uh, if you're even just trying to make good, consistent money in real estate, mm -hmm. you have to have multiple irons in the fire. Yes. You have to. Like, yeah, you, yeah. you got to have multiple contracts. You got to have multiple deals going, you know, stuff like yeah. that. But everyone starts somewhere. So it's like once yeah. you get something, okay, great. Manage that deal, but don't give it your full attention until you know it's something. You know, just well, it, keep it moving even along. When it, right things, find more yeah. deals. Even when it is something, the thing is, it's all about time management. You know, so yep. you gotta allocate. Okay, these are my current deals. These are my follow-ups. I'll spend this amount of time with the current deals. Spent this amount of time with the follow-ups, and spent this amount of time getting new leads. You know. Yeah. So once you hit that, like you gotta move on. You know, yep. okay, great. I, I'll follow up with you next week. And the yeah. Call. Yeah. That's it. And actually, this deal wouldn't have been so bad, like, I, like you just said, if I had done better, which it's hard to do on your first deal because you everything's new. Yeah. But yeah. if I had managed my time a little bit better of just like not, not devoting so much time to it before I had reasonable certainty yes. that we could get this done, yep. that that would have helped too. That so, is one of the top mistakes you know, that learning. I see. That's one of the top mistakes I see new new people doing with not not just wholesaling, but real estate in general, is they concentrate so much on just one deal. And whether that goes through or that falls through, now they don't have another deal right after that. And now it took them, say, five months to get that deal done. And now they spent, during that five months, they didn't spend getting new deals. So now they got to spend another two to three months trying to find another deal, you know, and, you know, versus trying to feed the, the, the wheel, you know? Yeah. So. Because most of your good leads come up from through the follow-ups. They don't like even if you cold call, you know, most of your leads or most of your deals, they're not gonna say, Oh yeah, I'm ready to sell it. Give me exactly what you want and and, and you know what? We'll close next week. Doesn't yeah. work. You know. Yeah. Like I've had I've had sellers call me back that I I dropped them a mailer, um, just like a postcard or whatever. Yep. And they called me back like literally over a year later. Yeah. But yeah, I think, I think the key is it's like, uh, one of my mentors said to me one time that in your business, the magic really starts happening when you're doing it all. Yep. Like you, you have to do it all at the same time. So like, um, just as, as a, for instance, with flipping, it's like, we're always looking for sellers. We're always managing deals. We're mm -hmm. always raising money. So yeah. that that's one of the one of the key things that's allowed me to scale pretty quickly in a short period of in a short period of time is that I raise capital. So like we have over two million dollars in assets under management right now, right. and none of that is our money. Wow. So, by the way, if anyone um, is has money that they're looking to put to work, um, please reach out. I'll give my contact info later in the later in the yeah, show. Yeah, most but, definitely. So, but yeah, so yeah that that was like um, that was a pretty transformational thing for me too, because like I was okay. like I was really set like down the down the wholesaling path. And yep. partly because I, 
I thought to myself, well, I don't really have like that kind of cash laying around to just like buy a house, renovate it. It's like do all of that just yeah. cash. Um, and who wants to go through that many like mortgages and stuff like that? Oh yeah, <laughs> but, I know. Yeah, that's that's not a not a very scalable route. Like if you want to flip one or two houses, that okay, that that can work for you. But to like build a business around it, not scalable.